Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Season 2, Episode 7. First thing as always, thank you to those of you that have subscribed to my channel. If you are new, names will go up over here. And thank you to those of you that have been following and supporting me on the forum. Recognition goes up over here. Now, before we get into this video, I have three notifications to mention. The first one is, as you can probably tell, my field cap is different. All I've done is put down the side and the back because it is a bit chilly in here. The second notification is, yep, my gloves are not on today. I have misplaced them, so it is pretty chilly and cold handling these rifts today. And the third and final notification is, I wish I told you on February at the beginning of my video, I have changed out my workout and everything is going great so far. Other than that, let's get into this video today. Now, if you haven't seen my video from last week, check it out, it helps out the channel. What's going to happen is, pretty much, I mentioned a few of my second-hand riffs, so I thought, why not complete the rest and show you the rest of my collection? So, before we get into the intro, I've always wanted to do this. Lock and load. So to start this video off, I'm going to put a picture in front of you, hopefully you should see four riffs of various makes and models. These are all second hand and I have purchased these over the last couple of years. Now from left to right, that is the order of purchase and I have two questions for you the viewer whilst you're watching this. Number one, which one do you think is the cheapest? And number two, which one do you think is the most expensive? Now, if you stay towards the end of the video, you'll find out your answers and see if you are correct or wrong. But it doesn't matter at the end of the day, it's just a little bit of fun in this video whilst in lockdown. Now, I don't want to go too much into detail about my last video. If you've seen it, that's great. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It helps out the channel. And I covered a lot of things buying secondhand. So I want to try and get away from that and go over a few more things today. So just to quickly summarise what I mentioned last week, the pros and the cons. Um, be sensible, again, whatever money you use, okay, keep it safe. Um, it comes down to the buyer as well as the seller agreeing on terms, and hopefully it works out for both of you. And a true air softer will obviously use the honor system, and hopefully both of you benefit. However, if you are one of those people that is trying to rip people off, con people, you will be found out and dealt with, and what goes around comes around, and I'll leave it at that. So... Moving on, now in last week's video I mentioned prices, gears, accessories that came with it and I won't do that with these two because that's what I mentioned in the last video. So I'm just going to briefly go over these and mention a few other things and get into the third and fourth room. So this was the first one, my AKM e &L. Now both of these have served me greatly since I started Airsoft. Now, recently I have gone through all my AKs in my collection and adjusted the slings um, to make it easier for me, suit me. And recently I did put up on the forum um, on my status that I did a quick kind of basic DIY do it yourself. And as you can see, I've got a cable tie here to support the top rail with this attachment here and some camera tape to support it so it's not loose. The reason being is I lost the AK pin that holds the top rail in and yeah, it's doing a pretty good job. At the end of the day, with an AK you can pretty much customise these things. You can customise any rift for that matter, but kind of going for that apocalyptic loadout. And considering the circumstances we're in, not bad, eh? Now, let's move on to my second one. Now this is my AKS 74U ENL as well. Again, I mentioned all the details before, same again with the sling. I haven't really done anything much to this. Um, just to let you know as well, um, these things are solid, reliable. I haven't had to change anything internally or externally, apart from maybe rails, mags, the usual. Um, but what's great about these is, um, in the years that I've had them, all I've had to do is clean out the barrel and they're still going strong. So not bad for that company. So yeah. Like I said, I want to go briefly over these two. Now, I have mentioned the price tags for these in the last video. So for the next two riffs, I won't do that. Otherwise, it will give away the question at the end. So, yeah. Can I recommend these? Yes. Um, 
When it comes to second hand though, before we move on to the next two, I forgot to mention this, and I'm gonna mention it now. If you're looking for an M4, um, again, make, model, um, variations will apply. You may be specific like I am. Um, everything that I have in my collection, I wanted for me in my collection to be different or the same as some of the others. So again, prices will vary. Um, just be aware when you buy your own riffs, um, hopefully when you get into Airsoft, if you haven't already, don't feel under pressure to buy what everyone else has. Buy what you want, okay? At the end of the day, it's your collection. And in the past, I've had um, one person come up to me and they said, why did you get that model? Oh, I've got that. Why would you get that? And it kind of escalated, not like over the top, but I was just like, well, I bought it because I wanted it. And yeah, I wanted one in my collection sooner or later. And a true airsofter, again, will be like, oh, that's cool. You've got something the same as me. That's great. What makes you yours? And there's this good atmosphere. However, if you've got that one toxic player, and there are people in the community, thankfully they are rare, that may say, oh, no, 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 that's not good. You shouldn't have that. You should have this. Well, again, it's preference at the end of the day. It's your choice. Don't feel under pressure to buy something else because of what someone said. Again, I bought what I wanted because it's what I want. Now, you may be an AK fan. You may be an M4 fan. You may be a G36 fan, M14. The list goes on. There's so many riffs to choose from. So at the end of the day, even if you're buying second hand or brand new, go for what you want, okay? It's that simple, okay? Do not feel compelled to buy or be forced into a team, okay? Um, doctrine, so for example, oh, you must wear this camel, you must have this riff, you must be here to do. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Just simple as that. Don't feel like you have to join straight up, okay? Have fun, it's airsoft at the end of the day. So let's move on to three and four. So for these last two riffs, riff number three and riff number four, what I'm gonna do is what I did in my last week's video. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of detail, everything that came with it. Um, I'm not gonna mention the price tags, again, saving the question. So I'm gonna put a picture up here quickly for my third riff. Now, this picture was taken recently um, because I had to. Now, everything you see in this picture is what came with this riff. So from the gun case, which I won't get out, I'm going to show you the other items that came with it. Now it also came with a jamming rod, don't need to show that. It came with an extra spring, hopefully you can see that, there's already one in the rift. It came with a leather pouch, hopefully you can see that. Now I believe this is surplus World War I, possibly World War II, it's a reproduction, could be a legit thing. And it could be English, French, I'm not sure, but if you know what type of pouch this is, if you know your history, put your answers in the comments down below. And this came with four mags, which was fantastic. It also came with this, a Lee Enfield bayonet and scabbard. So let's take the bayonet out. Beautiful and great to attach to a Lee Enfield, especially when you can charge around and use these things when it is safe. So I'm gonna put this away. Now, I'm getting to the important part, talking about my third riff, the Enfield. Now, I haven't mentioned it already, I've got my glasses on, safety first, none of these have BBs in them, okay, or batteries for that matter, okay. So, this is where the mags go in. Just pull it out, if I can get it out, <laughs> fiddly, it doesn't help when you've got cold hands. Ugh, cold hands. There we go. Sorry about that. Still couldn't find my gloves. Now, this is a VSR 10 compatible bolt action rifle. It's a spring, not a gas. So it contains these mags. They hold 30 to 50 rounds. I think they are 50, I think. Don't hold me to that. And the good thing is, you can fit all four of them in here, which is fantastic. If I use this, I might get around to using it in apocalyptic loadout. Now, here are some of the cons when I bought this, okay? Now, originally it came with four of these. This is the last one. Simple reason is one of them was broken, okay? But he did mention this in the details. And the other two I lost in the field because they were slightly loose and they came out, which didn't help. And obviously, I've got one left. So I'm going to put that back in. Wait for that click of the button. Good. Make sure it's there. Now, 
if you want to know more about this, probably can't fit it in the screen. This was from Shoot and Scoot, and they do Lee Enfield spring action rifles. Um, I'll put links down in the description down below these sites. However, I'm going to be honest, I tried originally trying to buy one of these brand new, kept calling up the site, or the person working there, should I say, and they said, oh, there's more coming in, but never happened. So trying to find one of these is not easy. There are other makes out there, don't get me wrong, but they are very expensive and I can't be bothered to pay for that amount for a riff. It's that ridiculous. So apart from a few mag issues, the other thing I've got a problem with this is this keeps slam firing and I'm going to take it to my friend and hopefully get this fixed. If not, going to have to take it all out and replace it with some VSR 10 parts. Thankfully, that's easy enough and cheap enough. Um, I have managed to get a few hits with this and a few bayonet kills with this. Fantastic feeling when it comes to airsoft. Again, it's just part of the fun. Um, you can try and look around. Again, I'll come on to this in just a second. Um, trying to find these things, World War II, spring rifles. Some of them are easier to find than others. And other makes are easier to find, some are more expensive, riffs, second hand. But this brings me to my next part, and again, I didn't mention this in last week's video. If you're like me, and like I said, you're very picky and you know what you want, okay? If you go onto second hand websites, you might find a ton of AKs, different makes. You might find a ton of M4s, a ton of pistols. If you're looking very specifically for something, good luck, because. <laughs> These, especially on second-hand websites, are very hard to find. Now, unless you've got the money and can find actual genuine surplus parts and then put it all together with a BSR 10 compatibility, good luck with that. It will be more expensive, but again, if that's what you're into, go ahead. However, um, yeah, that's the hardest part sometimes, buying second-hand, is you might want a G3. You might want a Lee Enfield. You might want a Mosin Nagant or any other weapon like a Fowl, AG Spring, something that's not often seen on a field, not going to be easy to find. And bear in mind, they will tend to be more expensive. Don't get me wrong, they will still be cheaper than brand new, and you might get extra gear like I've shown you, but that's part of second hand, so just bear that in mind. Other than that, I just can't wait to use this again when I get the chance, when it's working. And it came with a apparently genuine sling as well. And it has a good feeling to it. Again, wood. All of it is pretty much all legit, as far as I can tell. Apart from this. Don't be fooled. This is all rubber. Um, and obviously BSR 10 compatibility. But yeah. Nice little gem in the collection. So let's put that down. Now, moving on to my... Last riff, the fourth one, which is over here. Now, this is a D Boy AKMS, and again, I bought the second hand, adjusted the sling. The mag, um, for those of you that are AK fans or considering getting an AK, I'll show you from here actually. Turn it around, bear with me. Now, if you can see this, I'm going to turn it ever so slightly. You can see there is a little bit of wobble, okay? Nothing too serious. But if I twist this into the stock, hopefully from this angle, it's very difficult to show you from this distance. Now I've tightened it this way, as you can see, I'll try and hold it. There's very little wobble now. So again, things to consider, especially with an underfolder stock for an AK. So just bear that in mind. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'll put a picture up here. This is what it originally came with. Okay, came in a box, I got rid of it, and it came with five mags and a battery. So it came with, sorry, it came with a Demon's battery, which is another version compared to the other batteries. Again, I don't know my technicals, so there's two types really when it comes to batteries. Apart from voltage, that's a different story. Let's make sure that's back on. Now, what was nice about this is it came, like I said, with the battery. I have got the other mags here. Bear with me one second. Now what's great about this, and I'll get 
gets on to it in a second. Now this is a good option um, to buy from China when it's safe. I bought this a couple of years back. Open it up. Another compartment here. And this can hold five AK mags ready to go. Obviously I've got one in the AKMS, which is here, sorry, in front of you, and the AKM to the other side. Um, so it came with those five mags. The bag was not included, but a good option if you want to look at that. Um, for your loadout and all of these AKs, so I'm going to take them out. So, like I said, the riff itself is a D boy. These mags are E and L mags, so it's great to go with my other riffs. Um, honestly, though, um, he mentioned in all the details, um, and don't hold me to this if you consider this option. Now, this does fit in here and works. I've used it a number of times on the field, which is great. However, if you get a brand new D-Boy and consider getting these mags, I don't know how reliable it will be with your D-Boy because again, I don't know if he's actually, that doesn't look like there's been any work or adjustment actually on the AK itself. Um, so just consider that, especially D-Boy, D-Boy mags, because I can tell you mine works with ENL, but I can't guarantee it for yours if you consider that option, okay? So, some friendly advice there. Let's put that down. So yeah, I've shown you the riffs now. I've shown you the accessories they came with. So now it comes down to that final question. Which one do you think was the cheapest and which one do you think was the most expensive? Now, Bear with me. I've got the other riffs here now. That's them here. So, the first question. Which one do you think was the cheapest? Okay. I'll give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Have you made a decision? Okay, so out of these four, it was actually... Number four, this one. This was the cheapest out of my collection. This was the D-Boy that came with five mags and a battery. And if you want to know the price, this was 160 quid pounds for those of you that don't know. Again, currency will vary from where you buy. So that was a bargain. It came with mags and a battery, good to go. Hasn't failed me at all. None of these, well, apart from the Lee Enfield, which has been the most technical to sort out but it can be done and sorted so these AKs that you see here have not need to be internally upgraded or anything apart from just having the barrels clean so great job there so that was the cheapest one so my second question now is which one do you think was the most expensive so that one's out of the picture so that leaves three here one well let's see <laughs> one two three literally so five seconds one two, three, four, five. You got an answer? Okay, let's see if you're right. It was in fact, this one. This was the most expensive out of my collection. And the only reason it was expensive, well, as you can see, it came with the case, the accessories and everything. And still again, it was a bargain for what I paid. The only thing that made this more expensive than all the others that you've seen here mentioned is the simple part postage. And like I said, with that gun case, yeah, you can see why. So if you want to know the actual figure, 330, okay? Now you're probably thinking, some of you that are more experienced in airsoft, that's not too expensive. Most new things cost that. Well, yeah, true, fair enough. Some things, good things from other makes and companies will be over 330 for sure especially in the UK. However, finding one of these, like I said, it was rare. Um, I'll tell you the background story behind this, actually. For the last couple of years, I wanted the Lee Enfield. Obviously, UK pride and everything. And, well, it's one of the best bolt actions in my own personal opinions. And still going strong, even in certain parts of the world today. Now, there were two times, actually, in the past, in the last couple of years, that I saw this pop up on a second-hand website. And I was like straight in there, like trying to negotiate, get the person's um, contact and negotiate with him. 
Sadly, on those two occasions, no responses. And yeah, I was disappointed. But then the third and final time, like they always say, third time is the charm. I managed to come across this being sold and get in contact, negotiate the details. And we both obviously walked away with the right things that we intended. So yeah, my main thing now for 2020, obviously during lockdown, I will get my friend, hopefully, to fix this because it deserves to be, well, brought out to specs and it's part of my collection and it's the gem of my collection so far. <laughs> and probably will be because it's British. But no, I'm gonna put these down here. <sighs> So yeah, that was my entire second-hand collection. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, put your answers in the comments down below. In fact, I have a question for those of you that are watching, and hopefully you enjoyed this. If you've bought second-hand, what has been, and it doesn't matter if it's your most expensive or not, what has been your best purchase second-hand? And I can tell you right now, all of these have been great, but like I said, because of its rarity, this is my best find second hand, the Lee Enfield. So I'm quite curious to find out what your answers will be. Again, I'll try and get back to you. Again, put your answers in the comments down below. I'll put the link, in, sorry, the links in the description down below. And yeah, that's it for my video. So like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to click the little bell icon so you know when the next video is. I enjoyed making this video. I look forward to making the next video. The most important thing you can do is stay safe.